Today on Dead Dodge Garage, we learn things about four-cylinder industrial Cummins engines. And we make a mess. This is why we can't have nice things. <sighs> you know, this bracket spacing here looks kind of familiar. And I figured out why. Duh, one wire. Well, after a little running around and visits to two parts stores, I got an oil pan. And I installed this bell housing adapter. This is an SAE adapter. It was used in the piece of equipment this was in. I could bolt an Allison or something right onto this. What I want to do long term is use this. This is what was used to install them in Dodges. It's shorter and it bolts to the Chrysler transmission. And my genius plan is to use a Chrysler automatic behind this engine if I can find one. One issue. The Chrysler block adapter locates the starter here. And this oil fill that's mounted to the block where one of the mount plates goes, that won't fly with that huge old starter. So I'll have to change that arrangement and get a cap up here somehow. Or just put the filler on the timing cover like truck engines have. Well, how's that help? Well, this dang starter don't. It's weird, it kicks out, but it won't engage with that ring gear. I even swapped them, just to be sure, but it won't. I'm gonna have to go buy another starter. Hopefully I can even find the right one, just to figure out if that's my problem. You can grab the one off the P-pump engine, I guess, and then swap block adapters and take the flywheel. Why has everything gotta be so difficult? Oh, you know, this starter is also much shorter, so it'll just fit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Dodge starter will fit just fine, so I guess that's what I'll do, but not today. Well, after finding out that starter wouldn't turn the engine, I went ahead and swapped the block adapter, robbed the flywheel and the starter off the P-pump engine, which only fits if I leave this filler neck breather thingy loose, so that's good. I'm sure I could modify it. Again, I'll probably end up deleting it anyway. It's convenient that parts off the 12 valve fit. It's also annoying because I need accessories for three engines and I have enough for one. Well, um, 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 oh, <laughs> ground. Hey. Maybe I should lower this more. It's doing a happy dance. Sounds like I've got a leaky intake valve and that's why it's speeding up on the one cylinder. Definitely need some more juice to crank this thing over, but might have to dig into the covers and see if maybe it's an adjustment issue or if it's something else not so good. But, may as well crank some more oil pressure in it and see what happens. Oh, come on. Always with the shooting spark. Okay. Now for some fuel. If only I could find that fuel line I bought. What's that? It was right next to me the whole time. Easiest fuel system to bleed ever, maybe? I know absolutely nothing about these Lucas injection pumps, so I made some educated guesses. This sure looks like a throttle, and this sure looks like it could be a shutoff, so let's see what happens. Oh, yeah. You're kidding. Yeah, it's gonna run. Actually, I remember now I did find this wire, which I bet good money is a shutoff solenoid. Mm hmm. You heavy duty guys don't need to email me. I know. Oh, I skipped a step. That's, uh, 
That's electrical smoke. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Still no slappy injectors. Okay, I went ahead and consulted a diagram, and I guess I was both right? This is the shutoff lever. What I don't know is if it's normally allowing fuel or normally disallowing fuel, and you have to open it. I'm going to try it like this. Also, I think this is an electric shutoff. It is in the transfer pump section, but I can't find this on any diagrams. I hear it clicking when I put power to it, so I guess we'll just go with that. See what happens. I don't know. Might be magic. Also, I have to wait for this to charge. I think it's right. It kind of hit on one cylinder. Now I'm on a quest to find the easiest but liveliest battery to rob. Yeah. Easiest, yes. Liveliest, hmm. I mean. Yeah, it won't even start this pile, so it's definitely not gonna start 4BT. 4B, 4BT, whatever. But I got options. It's encouraging they went to the trouble of tightening the cable so it wouldn't go anywhere. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a go handle. But, uh. <laughs> Still not sure on the shutoff. I'm getting little burbles through no matter what I do. Hmm, I'll figure out the magic combination. Of course, now even the good battery's going down. Lovely. Thanks to the old DeBoss garage, I learned you need to crack these bleeders. So I did. Already had a nice healthy stream of diesel there. This one had some cruddy looking stuff. Happy to get that out. I'm just fighting batteries. Crank's happy. It cranks slow. Everything's getting hot. My new ground is too small, but my old ground is garbage. I did go ahead and check the oil pressure. Yep. It's got some. Should be plenty. I still hear a weak hole. I'm hoping it's a valve issue. Maybe if we get it fired off, I'll be able to tell which one it is and maybe it'll just magically go away. Although I doubt it. Whether I'm setting the shutoff the right way or not, I am getting fuel out of these rear two injectors. Little trickles anyway. No huge nice yet. I'm probably gonna have to leave these batteries and jump boxes to charge and go off and do other stuff because, well, there are only so many charged batteries around here to rob and on top of that, that ground wire is getting pretty hot and the starter seems unhappy with light. It's making little bits of smoke. I'm sure it'll want to run as soon as the stars align and say a couple prayers and kick it a few times. Oh yeah, with that big huge pan on it, I kind of thought it was going to hold a bunch of oil. I actually didn't change the filter because, yeah, it looks okay, even though I bought one. So without touching the filter, I put in exactly two gallons and it is exactly at the full mark. So I'm guessing the total capacity is two and a half. The internet says give her the old tappy tap tap, but I gotta hold the fuel to full and I don't have three hands. I'm just gonna systematically go down the line and kill every battery I got in the yard. Except the side post one, which is pretty much dead anyway. And that one's already in the shop and dead. You. You. That's way too much work. Yeah, also too much work. Well, I guess that's a wrap on today's attempt. I'll put the good battery, which is not even mine, on the charger, let the jump box chew to overnight. Maybe it'll go tomorrow. The weather report says it's supposed to stay not raining. Do I dare trust it? Somebody plugged the jump box in, but then unplugged it, so it's not charged. A couple minor tactical errors aside, might be ready to run, let's see. Of course my jump box wire doesn't want to just hang out on the starter. So there's a bit of a dance to this. Hold ground, hold throttle.
That's cool. It sure sounded like it had a weak hole to me, but it also sounded really good. Very loud. Like, oh my God, extremely loud. My ears hurt. Do I dare fire it up and loosen the injection lines one by one and try and see if I can find a weak hole? I don't know. Kind of sounds like a lot of work. Let's see if it still sounds like it's got low compression on one. <laughs> I not only hear it, I see it. It's not a valve issue at all. It's that injector seal. Well, I can fix that. I actually got new ones with it. Haven't fixed the injector washer yet, but I want to see what it starts like now. Yeah. All right, for those keeping track at home, that is a shutoff lever. You don't have to actuate it to make it run. You have to actuate to shut it off. Naturally, it's in running state, so it's open. This is an electric fuel shutoff though. So you need power to this for it to run. Which is interesting. I couldn't find that on any of the diagrams I saw for the CAV. <sighs> I just cannot have anything nice. Serious power move to just dump diesel on the ground when it's $6 a gallon. Oh yeah. Gloves! This is all just from bleeding the pump. Oh, and the return line coming out of the jug. That's horrible. I have to tear a scamp apart in here now. I gotta clean this oil slick. Well, I pulled the return lines and I'm getting in here, pulling the line off the top of the injector. I just noticed something. Obviously this has been monkeyed with. Look at these injectors. They're tight in that lower nut. And you look at this one, and there's a gap in there. Huh. Well, there's a clue. It was tight, but it wasn't tight. I'm over here on the uh, spare head. You know, I've done a couple sets of 12 valve injectors. It's been a while. I just pulled the one out of the other head, you know, by hand, no problem. And I thought, mm, okay, well, now I remember every time I've ever done them before, you know, they stick in the head. They don't just pop out like this one's doing. It doesn't want to come out. It wants to live in there. It's actually a special tool to pop them out. Or sometimes you use a line and a pry bar. You know, there are tricks. Yeah, this is a high budget operation around here. So only the finest. Okay, that's what I thought. There ought to be a copper washer there. Ooh, this looks, um, this looks not good. So I'm gonna grab the washer and put that one back in. Well, it's, uh, it's more than just a washer. It's a nozzle tippy cup thingy. So what is up with this focus? What was that I was saying? Something about, um, yeah, yeah, that was it, using this cruddy looking thing and hoping everything's fine. Why will you not focus? What's wrong with you? Of course, I carefully set the clips for the return fittings up here on the covers one by one, and I carefully started installing them back on the injectors, and then I got distracted by my stupid phone, and next time I look, one of them's gone. What are the chances it's in there? Low, but more than zero. Oh, thank the Lord. Well, the blood bath's getting worse. Okay. Injector's done. Let's see if it cranks with even compression now. Um, what did I do? What did I do? That ground's questionable at best. <laughs> It's not blowing around the injector now, but I'm still hearing a whoosh in the intake, I believe. So I may well still have a valve issue, but we might as well see what it does. But first, rudimentary ear protection. Okay, Google, how much diesel in your ear is too much? Kind of smells like diesel oil too. 
I don't know how that's possible. There's no open holes to crankcase or anything. Anyway, I didn't uh, rack the injectors again. Hopefully it's just bled. I don't know, let's see. <laughs> Here's my genius theory. This engine was in a little backhoe or something, and clearly whoever was servicing it didn't quite know what they were doing or they didn't care. Either way, obviously it had a issue. That injector at least was replaced or removed and put back in with no injector cup. The injection pump was replaced. One has to wonder if they replaced it because it was running like dog's not. who knows? And when they did that, they goofed that up and left that loose, and that became a problem later. But what if that cup was gone for a while, and while that cylinder was dead, that intake valve started hanging up, which is what caused the huffing up the intake. Check this out. Now that it ran, you heard it pick up there. Oh, come on. Just be cool. It's all attitude with this operation. <laughs> hear it now i hear it again i still probably need to pull that cover and check it out but it sounds much more even cranking i'm just hearing the whoosh noise i wonder if it's even rings that were washed from not running for a long time yeah it's possible sounds like intake but i do have open crankcase here too so it would be easy to hear also notice it's cranking over much nicer with just a battery now when the ground is making contact and I think that's because everything's all lubed up and happy. Well, that's pretty excellent. We got ourselves a running 4B engine. Maybe next time we'll turn it into a 4BT. And hopefully not too long after that, we stab it into that big, huge camper van out there. Thanks for watching.